There are not many large aircraft manufacturers that have survived alongside the Boeing and Airbus duopoly. Over the years, most have moved aside or have been acquired. Embraer stands out as one of the largest independent manufacturers today, offering a range of smaller private and regional commercial jets. With a recent failed merger with Boeing, it looks set to maintain its independence. What are the origins of this Brazilian manufacturer, and how has it grown to be a key player in this market? This video takes a closer look at the history and development of Embraer and its aircraft. The Brazilian government started Embraer on August 19, 1969, as a wholly owned government company called Empresa Brasileira de Aeronautica. Government interest in the aviation industry had begun much earlier. From the 1940s, the government of Getulio Vargas invested in several areas, creating a Ministry of Aeronautics, supporting the expansion of aviation technology and commercial operations. It also opened a college, the Technological Institute of Aeronautics, which would go on to train Embraer's first president, Osiris Silva. Several airlines were operational during this period, including Varig and Servicos Aéreos Cruzeiro do Sul. Both were founded in the late 1920s with German involvement. It was after the change in government in 1964 that the new administration launched Embraer. The government appointed Ozira Silva as the president and Embraer was born. Most of Embraer's initial contracts were with the Brazilian government, which supported its growth over the first 20 years. It launched one aircraft in 1973 that served as both a military and civilian aircraft, the Embraer EMB-110 Bandeirante. Translating as Pioneer in English, the plane was a regional turboprop with a capacity of just 15 to 21 passengers. It had, in fact, first flown in 1968, and its early success was a leading factor in the formation of the company. The EMB-110 has been quite popular ever since, remaining in production until 1990. Embraer delivered 501 of these aircraft. As of 2019, Flight Global notes that 42 remained in use in both military service and with several airlines. These are mostly in the Americas, with US cargo airline Wiggins Airways having the most. Still, it remains in overseas use with Air Rarotonga and Middle Eastern cargo airline Payam Air. You may wonder why the series began with EMB-110, not Dash-100. There was actually an EMB-100 code used for the prototypes of the first Banderante aircraft. Embraer refined these to achieve the operational EMB-110. After the success of the EMB-110 Banderante, Embraer moved on to the larger turboprop EMB-120 Brasilia. This next aircraft was initially envisioned as a family of three models, but was changed before production began to just a single aircraft with a capacity of 30. It also offered several variants with increased range or cargo conversions. This likewise sold well, mainly to US regional airlines. In total, Embraer delivered 354 aircraft up to 2001, and it too remains in service. Since its inception, Embraer has developed military aircraft alongside civilian ones. At the start, much of this was for the Brazilian government, but this soon expanded internationally. This has helped the company grow and remains an important part of its operations today. If you're liking this video so far, why not click subscribe and hit the like button? Oh, and be sure to click that notification bell too. In the 1980s, it partnered with Italian companies Aritalia, today Alenia, and Maki, today Air Maki, to develop an AMX fighter aircraft. Around 200 of these aircraft were built. Embraer also developed the EMB-312 Tucano, introduced in 1983. This has been popular with several air forces as a trainer and light attack aircraft, with over 600 sold. The Super Tucano is based on this model and remains in production. It has also been licensed for production in the UK by Short Brothers. Given the name Short Tucano, this version served with the UK Royal Air Force as a primary training vehicle until 2019. Embraer's military capacity expanded further in 1987 when it acquired Aerotech. This was a military-focused manufacturer producing military training aircraft for the Brazilian Air Force and for regional export. Embraer was formed as a state-owned company, and this did not change until the 1990s. There were a couple of factors that contributed to this. Following an unsuccessful investment in another turboprop project, the CBA-123 Vector, the company was in severe financial difficulty. 
Also, the new Brazilian government of Itamar Franco, elected in 1989, favored divesting state-owned entities. Privatization was the solution to these challenges, and the process began in 1991. Embraer's founder and first president, Osiris Silva, returned to the company to lead this process after leaving in 1986. Privatization was completed and the company sold to investors on December 7, 1994. In 2000, ownership changed again and Embraer would make simultaneous listings on the New York and Brazilian stock exchanges in July 2000. The company remains publicly traded today with 49% of shares held through the New York Stock Exchange and 51% through Brazil. Its main individual shareholders, according to Embraer Investor Relations, are Brandes, an investment company with 15.1%, and Bonaspar with 5.4%. The latter is the Brazilian National Bank for Economic and Social Development. From the mid-1990s, Embraer focused on the expansion of its commercial aircraft manufacturing, introducing larger regional jets and new business jets. The first move in this expansion was the introduction of the Enterprise Regional Jet, or ERJ, family. Embraer launched this program at the Paris Air Show in 1989. The original ERJ-145, also known as EMB-145, was proposed as a stretched version of the EMB-120 with a capacity of 45. There were several delays in its development due to factors both technical and financial. Privatization in 1994 helped, and Embraer looked for partners to share development costs. The final design switched to rear-mounted engines instead of placement under the wings and offered a capacity of 50 to 55 passengers. The ERJ-145 first flew in 1995 and entered service in 1997. There have also been two shorter ERJ variants, which share the same aircraft type rating. The ERJ-135 is the smallest variant. It's 3.54 meters shorter than the ERJ-145 and has a capacity of 37. It entered service in 1999. The ERJ-140 is the middle variant. It's just 1.4 meters shorter than the ERJ-145 and has a capacity of 44. A significant motivation for this was the demand from US airlines for sub-50-seat aircraft to meet union agreements. There have also been several other variants designed to meet different airline requirements, mostly offering various fuel capacities and ranges. The long-range ERJ-145LR and extra-long-range ERJ-145XR variants also have upgraded Rolls-Royce engines for higher power and lower fuel consumption. The ERJ family successfully propelled Embraer to a leading position in the regional jet market. According to Airfleet, Embraer has delivered 1,222 ERJ aircraft, and as of October 2020, an impressive 854 remain in service. After the success of the ERJ program, Embraer moved on to develop larger regional aircraft through its E-Jet program. These larger, newly designed aircraft had engines located under the wings. There are four main variants in this first E-Jet series. The E-170, with a single-class capacity of 72, was the first E-Jet launched. It was delivered to launch customer Lot Polish Airlines in March 2004. The E-175 is a slight stretch of the E-170, increasing capacity to 78 or 88 in a high-density configuration. It entered service in July 2005 with Air Canada. The E-175 competes with the Bombardier CRJ-900, whereas the E-170 is closer to the smaller CRJ-700. The E-190 is a larger variant with a stretched fuselage and a larger wing and horizontal stabilizer. It carries 100 to 114 passengers, competing with the Bombardier CRJ-1000, Airbus A220 and A318. Its size comes close to the smaller Boeing 737 variants. It entered service with launch customer JetBlue in 2005. The stretched E-195 offers a capacity of 116 to 124. It launched with UK airline Flybe in September 2006. A further stretched variant, the E-195X, would have taken capacity up to 130, but this was not developed. The decreased range was the main issue. The E-Jet series remains in production, and to date 1,566 aircraft have been delivered. 
According to Air Fleet, of these, 838 orders are for the E-170 and E-175 aircraft, while 793 are for the E-190 and E-195 aircraft. The program has been a big success for Embraer, with aircraft occupying a niche base for regional airline operations where higher capacity and higher costs aren't necessary. Embraer improved on the popular E-Jet series announcing the E-2 program at the Paris Air Show in 2013. This update features improvements including new wing design, more fuel-efficient engines and updated avionics. Capacities remain similar to the E-Jet series, but the upgrades help it compete better, especially against the Airbus A220. The E-2 series has three variants. The E-175-E2 is the smallest variant with a capacity of up to 90. It's extended by one row over the E-175 aircraft. The E-175-E2 made its first flight in December 2019. However, it will not enter service before 2021. The E-190-E2 keeps the same size and capacity as the E-190 of 104 to 114. Finally, the E-195-E2 is the largest aircraft offered by Embraer, adding three rows to the previous E-195 and offering a capacity of 132 to 146. It's still early for the E-2 series, but Embraer has already received 25 orders for the E-190-E2 and 148 orders for the E-195-E2. And there have been 14 and 8 deliveries respectively as of June 2020. Brazilian airline Azul is the largest customer so far, having ordered 51 E-195-E2 aircraft. Probably the most significant corporate event in recent years has been its proposed joint venture with Boeing. This was announced in July 2018 as a deal that would have seen Boeing take ownership of 80% of Embraer's commercial aircraft division. The deal would have had Embraer retain its military and executive aircraft divisions. The new operation would become known as Boeing Brazil Commercial. The joint venture never happened, however, as it was cancelled by Boeing in April 2020 and is unlikely to return. Both sides blamed each other for the collapse. Embraer claims that Boeing wrongly terminated the agreement due to its deteriorating financial position amidst the coronavirus pandemic and the grounding of its 737 MAX aircraft. Boeing, on the other hand, claims that Embraer failed to meet the requirements it demanded. They have since been in dispute over any termination fees due. Embraer has had to rethink its future following the failed merger. The plans were well developed, and the merger would undoubtedly have helped Embraer sell its e-jets against rising competition from Airbus and the A220. In the coming years, it's likely to face growing competition from new manufacturers too. Chinese and Russian companies are moving fast to develop new commercial aircraft. They started with smaller regional aircraft, but will soon include narrow bodies too. The first competitor aircraft is already flying. Chinese state-owned manufacturer Comac launched the ARJ-21 in 2016 with launch customer Chengdu Airlines. While the aircraft has so far only been sold to Chinese airlines, this could change as Comac's reputation improves. One likely option for Embraer is the development of a new aircraft. In July 2020, it confirmed it's still looking at a new turboprop development in the 70 to 100 seat range, possibly to enter service by 2025. Embraer Commercial Aviation's chief executive John Slattery spoke with Reuters about how this plan is in line with his company's vision, saying that a new turboprop sits in our target market, which we've always been clear is below 150 seats, and will have natural adjacency to the E2 offering. Of course, as a company, Embraer also has its military and executive jet divisions. It still works closely with the Brazilian government on defense contracts, which could be a safety net for the company. What has your experience been with Embraer jets? Share your opinions with us by leaving a comment. Did you know that we publish over 175 stories every single week on simpleflying.com? Be sure to check the link in the description for more great stories just like this. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe before you go.